Hello there, Mr Wilson here again for what is part two of going through this June 2022 paper three, A-level maths paper by AQA. Now, if you haven't already, definitely check out all the other parts. I mean, we've done the other two papers in this June 2022 series for the A-level, so this is now the paper three. Um, now, this is where it starts sort of stepping up again. It goes from the sort of warm-up questions to now the more interesting um, a level questions. Not that the warm up questions weren't interesting, but this um, is where it really kicks up a gear in terms of difficulty. So, question six. A design for a surfboard is shown in figure one. So, we've got a surfboard here. The top half of the surfboard can be modelled by the parametric equations um, x is equal to negative uh, 2t squared and y is equal to 9t, take away 0.7t squared. For uh, 0. Uh, t between 0 and 9.5 as shown in figure 2 where x and y are measured in centimetres find the length of the surfboard ok well the length is the x value right so we can just substitute in t is equal to 9.5 into the x equation because x is the length of the surfboard so t is equal to 9.5 because it goes from 0 to 9.5 to find the full length and x is equal to negative 2 uh, t squared so we could just substitute in so I'm just going to get my calculator 9.5 squared um, and then times by negative 2 and that's going to give me negative 108.5 now obviously we're measuring in centimeters so it's not possible for it to be a uh, negative value of, of x, right? So it's going to be just going to take the positive value as being, um, as being the length because when we sub this in, this is equal to negative 108.5. So therefore, the length of the surfboard must be 108.5 centimeters. That wasn't too bad, just a nice little substitution, although I can imagine it's going to sort of pick up a gear. Find an expression for dy by dx in terms of t, right then. So dy by dx can be expressed in, in a, through a parametric equation in two parts, basically. So dy by dx right, is equal to dy by dt multiplied by dt by dx. Now we know this to be true because obviously if you multiply these together, the, the dt on the numerator is going to cancel the dt on the denominator when you have dy by dx. So if we can just work out what dy by dt is, and we can work out dt by dx, then we just multiply them together. So dy by uh, dt then, well, if we look back, y is equal to 9t take away 0.7t squared. So let me just write that up here. y is equal to 0, uh, sorry, 9t take away 0.7t squared. Was that right? If you add this on a double page spread, it'd be so much easier. You wouldn't have to keep flicking back and forward all the time. And x is equal to negative 2 uh, t squared. x is equal to negative 2 t squared. So dy by dt, we just differentiate y with respect to t. 9 take away 1.4 t, because we times by the power, take 1 off the power. And then we could do the same thing for x, right? But this, but we here we're going to get dx by dt, which is not what we want, but we are going to get what we want eventually. But dx by dt, that's going to be negative 4t. So therefore, dt by dx is just the reciprocal of this, right? It's 1 over negative 4t. And then we just need to multiply these two things together. So dy by dx is going to be equal to uh, 9 take away 1.4t all over negative 4t like that and we don't really have to manipulate anything right now because that is the right answer so I'm pretty happy with that okay then hence show that the width of the surfboard is approximately one third of its length wow very interesting so in order to work this out then we need to find the value of t for which basically we wanted to find the stationary point right which is why we've got the expression dy by dx now if you want to find the stationary point this has to be equal to zero. So therefore, nine take away 1.4 t is equal to zero. 
So 1.4t is equal to 9. And then by doing 9 divided by 1.4, we get 6.43. So t is equal to 6.43. So that is the value of t that is this basically the stationary point of this expression, right? So that means if we sub that value of t back into both of our x and y, we should find that the width x is one third of, of uh, sorry, the width y is one third of x. So that should be the hopeful uh, outcome of this. So y is equal to 9 times 6.43 take away 0 0.7 times 6.43 squared. Okay, so you just need to sort of input all of that into the into the calculator and I get 28.9 for this so y is equal to 28.9 now if you remember we actually worked out what the width uh, the um, what the length of the surfboard was now just be really cautious here if you look at our diagram the y value is just the top half of the surfboard right is expressed by this parametric equation the top half so the entire width as they talk about in figure one is double the value that we've just got so the actual width of the surfboard right is going to be two lots of that so it's going to be approximately equal to um, 58 centimeters now, if you remember, we worked out our, the length of the surfboard to be 180.5. So, 180.5. So, one third of this is going to be approximately equal to um, 60.2. And that is approximately equal to 58. So, therefore, the width is approximately one third the length. Yeah, are we all sort of happy with that? So, a really, really interesting question because it's so nasty. The idea that you could have done all this wonderful maths, all this wonderful working out, the beautiful parametric equations, you've solved the stationary point, you've worked out the value of t, it's all wonderful. And then you forget that this is just the top half of the surfboard and you actually need to double to find the total width. It is so harsh um, to do that tiny extra step that then gets you to the final answer um, because actually all the tricky maths is sort of done with. Um, so I think that's just something to look out for. Really make sure you've read and understood the question. And when you actually work out a number, especially at A-level, ask yourself, what does that value represent, right? If that value only represents a quarter of the what you're trying to actually work out then maybe you need to times by four or, or the counter opposite so just think about what your value actually represents in the context of this question because it might be as with like this one we had to make a slight little adjustment close to the end of the the question in order to get the the thing that they were looking for i mean it was sort of nice that they told you it should be one third of its length so you could sort of see if you didn't um times it by two you can sort of see that that is not one third of that so you've you've sort of missed something here but i think a lot of students they might look at that and think they've done it totally wrong which is not the case at all so um yeah very interesting but but sort of harsh question there right then so question seven a planet takes t days to complete one orbit of the sun t is known to be uh, related to the planet's average distance d in millions of kilometers from the sun a graph of log to the base 10 of t against log to the base 10 of d is shown with data for Mercury and Uranus labelled. Mercury and Uranus are there. Find the equation of the straight line in the form of log base 10 uh, of t is equal to a plus b log base 10 of d, where a and b are constants waiting to be found. So this is actually just exactly like a normal linear equation. It's just that you've got these uh, logs in there. But in order to do a normal linear equation, you need two values, right? You need the y-intercept, which is this a value here. That is the y-intercept. And you need the value of b, right? And that is the, the gradient of the line. 
Well, the gradient is just the change in y over the change in x, right, for any line. So the change in the y value, well, that must be 4.49, take away 1.94, divided by 3.46, take away 1.76. So you can type that all in your, in your calculator, and when I type it in, I get 1.5. So the gradient must be 1.5, so b is 1.5. And then to find the y-intercept, well, we, we can't really see where it's going to intersect the, the sort of line here, but you can sub in a value into the equation and solve for the y-intercept, basically, is, is how you would, would sort of work this, this value out. So you can take the first coordinate and sub it in, basically. So we know that log to the base 10 of t is equal to a plus b log to the base 10. We now know that b is uh, 1.5, so we could set up, uh, and basically we could use that equation as a basis using y minus y1 equals mx minus x1 to find what the y-intercept is basically. So um, y minus y1, so y, which is uh, log to the base 10 of uh, t, right, Oh, let me write down y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. That's going to sort of remind me to do the right things in the in the right steps. So that must mean log to the base 10 of t is uh, subtract the y coordinate of one of these coordinates. Let's take that 1.94 is equal to m, which is 1.5 brackets um, log uh, base 10 of d take away 1.76 and if you expand and rearrange because I did this slightly earlier I got um, that the y-intercept is negative 0.7 so therefore we can write the equation as log to the base 10 of t is equal to negative 0.7 plus 1.5 log to the base 10 of d and that is the final answer that I get so we just need to do a sort of very nice little expansion here and just rearrange the constants to get not point, uh, negative 0 0.7. Right then, show that t is equal to kd to the power n, where k and n are constants waiting to be found. So basically, we, through our original equation, they've asked us to, to find that equation. We can use that in this part. I mean, that's what it says, hence, right? So... We can do a little rearrangement, though, to get log base 10 of t, right, which was on the left-hand side originally, but stays on that left-hand side. Subtract log to the base 10 of d, right, to the power of 1.5, because I can bring that in as a power, because according to the log laws, if you've got a number, uh, a number multiplied by a log, you can bring it in as a power, and that is equal to... Uh, negative 0.7 is that the right value again easy if you've got a double face spread rather than me having to flip back and forward so I've moved this over to the other side so basically I raised this as a power and then moved it over to the other side basically and subtracted it away so you get this expression here that I've got okay and then from here right you can bundle these together into one using another log law, so log to the base 10 of t divided by d to the power of 1.5, and that is equal to negative 0.7, right? So again, an, another log law. Well, you can just raise both sides to the power of 10. That gets rid of the log off this side, so you get t over one uh, d to the power of 1.5, and that is equal to 10 to the power of negative 0.7, Right, so you raise, basically you raise both sides to a power of 10. And then we can multiply this out to get t. So t must be equal to, because it wants t as the subject, t must be equal to 10 to the power of negative 0.7, d to the power of 1.5. And so you've got k, k is 10 to the power of negative uh, 0.7, and this n value is 1.5. Neptune takes approximately 60,000 days to complete one orbit around the sun. Use your answer 
to 7a part 2 to find an estimate for the average distance of Neptune from the Sun. So this is just a, a nice substitution, right? Because it says that the time it takes is 60,000, so that must mean that t is 60,000. So 60,000 is equal to 10 to the power of negative 0 0.7, d to the power of 1.5, and then it's just as simple as sort of rearranging and, and solving because we divide by this value. And then we get this is equal to d to the power of 1.5. And then we just, if we want to get the value of d on its own, we just take the 1.5th root of, of this. Um basically you you would take the if it's to the power of 1.5 and you want to do the inverse well 1.5 is 3 over 2 and then do the inverse you take the cube root and then square it basically um which is the same as doing this i mean you wouldn't really write it like this but i just want to kind of express it all in one step and this is equal to um this value when you work it out when you type it in your calculator and i got 4000 488.5 um, and it asks for an approximation, right? So find an estimate for the average distance um, approximation. So this is approximately equal to 4,500. Um, the units are, let me just double check, um, back here. So the units are millions of kilometres. So this is 4,500 uh, millions of of kilometers away from the sun right then i'm going to wrap it up there for uh, this part because it's been a this part i don't want to sort of drag it on too long but those have been two actually really interesting questions you know quite standard questions but places where students could struggle um and they do make you think a lot they make me think a lot but um hopefully they, they were nice and challenging for yourself so um if you've enjoyed this video then definitely check out all the other videos um, there's loads and loads on the channel now so hopefully there's enough there to sort of uh, something there for you to to improve on on your math skills and as with every video if you've got any questions then please feel free to put them in the comments below but all I want to say is thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day